On March 24th, Senior Judge Lynn Battaglia ruled that the new congressional map approved by the General Assembly violated the Maryland Constitution and Maryland Declaration of Rights. In a 94-page ruling, Battaglia described the initial map as a product of extreme partisan gerrymandering. She found it violated the state constitutional requirement that legislative districts consist of adjoining territory and be compact in form with due regard for natural boundaries and political subdivisions. She also found it violated the state constitution free election, free speech, and equal protection clauses. In response, the Democratic controlled assembly issued a redrawn uh, map and which was submitted to the court yesterday, as well as the attorney general who has appealed the decision of Judge Battaglia. Now the new map makes the districts more compact but Republican lawmakers contends it's still riddled with unfair partisan gerrymandering. And according to Republican delegate Kathy Schlega, the map barely gives lip service to Judge Battaglia's ruling, while Delegate Eric, Eric Lutke, the House, House Majority Leader, said the new map has significantly more compact districts and reduces the number of cross count, cross, county crossings in, in those districts. Now, Nancy, we all knew there would be a fight over the congressional districts. We saw this in the last uh, uh, millennium when we, when we did this. Do you think the General Assembly this time has met the spirit of Judge Battaglia's ruling as suggested by Delegate Lutke? Well, you know, uh, Maryland was in the record books for its gerrymandering uh, last time around. Uh, we really were up there. I think we were the number one worst uh, stayed in the country in terms of gerrymandering. And they got away with it. So why wouldn't they do it again this time around? Uh, I looked, actually, I looked at the old maps, congressional maps. The new, the one that's the General Assembly, I guess they've approved it, and hopefully the judge is approving it today. I mean, it takes us back to the 70s. It's rational. Makes sense. Like, you might argue if you were Mark that, you know, you messed, you messed up some of our precincts. But for once, like Montgomery County is, it's only two districts now. Usually we're split into bits. Uh, there are no spiders out there. Everything's logical. It makes a lot of sense. You can always argue about the edges, I suppose. But I think that anyone's gonna have a hard time uh, picking a fight with this one. Well, so Mark, we got, certainly the new map is an improvement over the one that was uh, rejected by the court, but it but doesn't meet the state constitutional requirement for being compact in form and respecting natural boundaries and political subdivisions. Well, there's nothing like uh, the prospect of a hanging to focus uh, people's attention and, and yeah. the hanging that would have come or will be coming is at the Court of Appeals. Um, obviously, this, there is a process for this, and uh, I think it is a, all but certainty that the Court of Appeals will have the last word on this. Uh, and <clears throat> the comparison is not with this, it, the, the latest change, but the comparison really is with the Citizens Bipartisan Commission that set up a very detailed process to develop maps. Uh, and that will be, I think, one of the alternatives that the Court of Appeals will be considering. And this one is pretty similar to that, frankly. It, it has moved in very, that direction. Very, very right. close, yes. yeah. yeah. Well, it, it did move in that direction. I mean, if you look, but if you look at Baltimore and the uh, the congressional districts surrounding Baltimore, it's far. It's really different. I mean, Montgomery County, I think, is is more similar in in the design uh, of the citizens uh, redistricting map uh, rather than. Uh, than what we had before. But I wanna go on to another element of this, Nancy, because the online news site, Maryland Matters, suggests that the newly drawn district, you know, that the one that is being considered by the, by the court right now, could pose a challenge to, district incum to Democratic incumbents in the sixth district represented by David Trone and the fifth district represented by Steny Hoyer. What do you think? Well, you know, that's life in the, in the big leagues, if you ask me. Uh, they moved Trone's district farther out. It still has, I think, a bit of Montgomery. It has Montgomery County in big, it. Yeah. Uh, and they have a hunk, you know, and the other problem that the Republicans are struggling with, I'll say it for you, Mark, uh, by and large, Maryland is more democratic. 
So, you know, he's going to have to work harder, but he, at least for David, uh, he already had to. He had to go out to Garrett County. There were four Democrats in, the, in, Har in uh, Garrett County, but he'd go out there. And I think, uh, you know, that's the challenge. Steny, he's a household name. I don't think he's going to have a problem. So, Mark, I'll let you respond to Nancy's comments, but also the the the, the opining by Maryland Matters that that now Andy Harris has uh, a safe seat again. Well, yeah, you probably will. <clears throat> probably, and, and probably to the frustration of uh, Heather Majeur, who had moved out, has moved out there and is challenging it. I, I think even when the district went into Anne Arundel County, he at least in this particular election cycle, should have been assumed to be the uh, the favorite. Um, the Hoyer district is, is interesting. Um, it's one thing to talk about Steny Hoyer, uh, but I think it's uh, candidly unlikely that he'll be continuing to run through the entire 10-year uh, cycle. And um, it's entirely possible, uh, I hope I said that gently, but uh, uh, it's entirely possible that that district uh, could end up becoming that much more competitive uh, in the future. You so know, does, I, does I, Neil I, Parrott have a sh shot at uh, defeating David Trone? Yeah, well, you know, the interesting thing is, and, and I, I, I support uh, uh, Neil uh, as uh, in full disclosure, is it's entirely possible that if the lines in six become more Republican, there could be some additional Republican candidates who would be very well funded, uh, who could jump in. Um, I'm thinking particularly of Ami Hober, who's ran, ran twice before in that district. Uh, and then I, I throw the ball back to Nancy to say if, if uh, David Trone feels he's got to spend, oh, say, five million dollars to hold his seat for another two years, uh, why doesn't he run for governor? <laughs> what an intrig That's an intriguing uh, proposition, Mark. <laughs> well, remember, John Delaney uh, gave it up. Yes. And I mean, I, I think that's a legitimate question. Can How long can David stand it? Uh, really. But, you know, it's a, a great satisfaction to be in public service, and he seems to have enjoyed, enjoyed it. He doesn't live there anyways, and it doesn't seem to matter. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll see what happens. Isn't that great? 